Welcome to Super Excel Training and Coaching. My name is Steve Huang. In this video, you are going to learn how to use XLOOKUP to look up horizontally. This is the second video in the XLOOKUP Inside Out series. If you haven't watched the first video yet, I suggest you to go back to watch the first video as that will give you the foundation to understand what we're covering in this video. You can download the training Excel file from the link given in the description below. So you can practice along and have this hands-on experience to truly master this skill. Now let's get into the Excel spreadsheet to see how we can XLOOK up horizontally. If you are to practice along with this video with the download Excel file, the file we're using here is Super Excel 2 XLOOKUP first to last horizontal. This data set is similar to what you have seen in the first lesson. We have the custom IDs, the bought on the different dates for those different product family or products for so many cases and dollar amount. Again, we're having 6,560 records over here. Given that data, we also want to somehow to get the region number, state name, city name of those custom ID. And this time, we do not have that table as vertical anymore. Instead, this is a horizontal range. We have the custom ID going across, not going down in one single column, but going across in one single row. So we can still use the XLOOKUP function to look for the custom ID from that range over there to find the custom ID, then return the region, state, and city. And the function structure will be the same as you have seen in the first lesson because the XLOOKUP function can look up vertically or horizontally. Now, let me make a copy of the sheet and I'm going to draw on my screen. Let me get rid of this button and give myself a little bit more space for me to draw over here. So, over here, we are going to do this XLOOKUP function and we are going to have three arguments. Again, we're still doing the basic form. We're omitting the fourth, fifth, sixth arguments. You may remember from the first lesson, when you omit the fourth, fifth, sixth arguments, that means the lookup will be in the order from first to last, and match type will be exact match. And when the exact match not being found, it will give you NA, which means not available. So now we are looking for this custom ID in the cell A11 over here. So that's my first argument. We're looking for that from where? Then the second argument will be the range you're looking within. So this time it's not in a column as we did in the first lesson. Instead, it's in a row. When this is in a row, then X lookup will look up horizontally. Our custom ID is in this range over here. So our second argument will be all the custom ID over here. Again, I'm only drawing this small rectangle, but the actual range will be going to the right all the way to include all those 41 custom IDs. This X lookup, we're looking for that first argument value, which is 14004. Within this range, which is the horizontal, then it will look from left to right if we're omitting the other three arguments. And that can be found over here, 1404. And then once the match has been found, then in the third argument, you decide where is the range you want to return the corresponding value. We are trying to get the region of the cosmetic for this formula. And the region is in the row 2 over here. So our third argument will be this range over here. Again, the actual range will be going to the right all the way to include all those cosmetic. Now for the teaching on the screen, I draw only a small rectangle. So with this X lookup, it looks for the first argument value within second argument range. When the second argument range is a horizontal range in one single row, then X lookup knows to look for that horizontally. If this is in one single column, then X lookup will look up vertically, but when this is horizontal, X lookup will look up horizontally. And once it finds the match, assuming that's somewhere over here, then it's going to return in the third argument. 
the cell value in same position. So in the same position, that cell value will be returned. All the other rules that we learned earlier in the first lesson, they still apply over here too, because it's still the same X lookup. It's just given that range is horizontal, it's looking horizontally. If you have 1404 4 appear multiple times, only the first match will be returned. Because once it finds the first match, it stops. It does not go any further. It does not care what you have after that. Only the first match will be returned. Now, you also have to make sure when you look up horizontally, the second argument range and the third argument range, they must have the same number of columns. Let's say if the second argument range has 41 columns and your third argument range has 43 columns, then the formula cannot work. They must have the same number of columns if you're looking horizontally. So that's how the X lookup works in terms of horizontal lookup. Now let me demonstrate this on my screen. Let me go to my first sheet and let me make my screen a little bit bigger. So in the style F11, we are going to do this X lookup function equal sign XL and then I will press the tab key to insert the function because now this XLOOKUP is in this autocomplete list. So once I enter XL, when this is the first one in the list, or this is the only one in the list, I just press tab. Remember, it's not the enter, it's the tab. So when I press tab, that will insert the function for me. Then my first argument is the cost my D I'm looking for, which is the cell A11. I will use my left arrow key to go to the cell A11 and then comma. Now the second argument will be the range you're looking within, which will be all those cost ID over here. Let me use arrow up, arrow up, 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 and the right. So starting from G5, I will select all the way to the right by hold on control, shift, and arrow right. So that will fix that range, then comma. Now you may not see my formula over here, but I can see my formula from the formula bar over here. Now I need to work on the third argument, which is the range to return the corresponding value, which will be region. That will be in row number two. So we use my arrow up to go arrow up, up, all the way to the row number two, and then go to the G2. From here, I need to select all the way to the right. Then I will hold down control and a shift, then press arrow right. So that's my third argument. And for now, we're doing just the three arguments. Then I can close the bracket and enter. You see that give us the region number for that cost ID 1404, which is region one. So that finds that 1404 over here, then return in the same position, the value in the third argument range, which is that one over here. Now, if I do change the second argument range to be different number of column from the third argument range, Let's say the second argument range will be starting from H5 rather than from G5. But my third argument range is starting from column G. So now those two range do not have the same number of column anymore. Now if I enter, I will get an error because we have the second argument range and the third argument range have different number of columns. They are not the same number of columns. So the formula cannot work. Let me change this back to G5 rather than being h5 and enter so now that is giving us the correct result now this is the formula for only that first custom id for only the region then we wish we can just do one formula can copy to all the other row other column to get the region state city for all the custom id so now we have to think about the reference again i mean assume you already have understanding about the relative reference, absolute reference, and mixed reference. In my training course, I spent one hour to teach about the reference. So here I will focus on the X lookup. I assume you have the knowledge of the reference. So give me that. If we wish to copy the formula down, then I want this custom ID to change to a different row. So I can allow the row to change, to be open. When copy or course to get the state and city, I still need to look for the custom ID in column A so I want the column to be locked, but row to be open. So I need my cursor at the A11. I will do F4 one time, two time, three time. Now my A is locked, but my 11 is open, that can change. So that's reference I need to have for the first argument. 
Now the second argument, which is that cost my D range, when copy my formula down, I do not wish this range to change to different row. I want to stay in row number five. So the row should be locked. And when copy or cross, I still want to look for the custom ID in the same column like from G to AU. So both column and row should be locked. So that will be absolute. Let me do F4 one time. That locks the absolute. For the third argument, now this will be a little bit different. The third argument is region number range. When copy my formula down, apparently, when I look for the different custom ID, I still want to return the value in the region number row, which is row number two. So the row should be locked. And then when copy across, ideally, I wish it can change to next row to state, next row to city. But that cannot happen. When you copy across, it can only change across. So that means we cannot make the reference to work when we copy the formula across, they can change to a different row. That will not happen. So for now, I will just make them as absolute. So lock both the column and row. Later on, I will change that to different row manually. So with that, I will enter. And then now if I copy the formula across, you will see that always giving us the region number because when copy across, that range, I lock that absolute, that will not change to any other column and it won't change to any other row either because I'm copying the formula to a different column. But now I need to make this to be in the state row. I can now drag this outline and drop at the row number three. So that will make that work to give me the state name. Now for the city, I can also go inside the formula and I can see the outline. The city is in the row number four. I can now drag the outline for that third argument range to the row number four and enter. So that gave me the city. Once I have all the three, I can copy them down in many different ways. In the first lesson, I did a cable shortcut way, but here I'm going to just use my mouse. I select all the three cells and leave my cursor at the bottom right corner when the cursor changes to a solid cross like this. So it's not like that. It's not like this. When the cursor is a solid cross like this, then I can do a double click. And that will copy the formula all the way down based on how many consecutive cells you have data for on the side or below. So now this gives us the result for all those custom ID, their region, state, and cities. I can move my cursor back up with just control arrow up. So this is how the XLOOKUP works to look up horizontally. The way for the XLOOKUP to know if you're looking horizontally or vertically is for you to specify that second argument range. If you make that as a one single row, it will look up horizontally. If you mix it as one single column, it will look up vertically. And your third argument has to be aligned with your second argument. If it is in a row, your third argument has to be in rows too. If it is in a column, your third argument has to be in columns too. That's how the X lookup works with horizontal lookup. If you haven't done so, I would suggest you to download the training Excel file from the link given in the description below to practice online, to have this hands-on experience, to gain the skill to actually perform a horizontal X lookup. For any question you may have regarding this lesson, please write a comment below. I will answer your question. If you find this video beneficial, please like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can learn more. In the third video of the X lookup inside out series, you are going to learn the fourth argument of the XLOOKUP function, what that means, what that does, when and where to use it. I look forward to seeing you in the third lesson. Thank you.